Hi, Keir. Um, I'm Isabel from the upcoming Love League to meet you. Um, congratulations on this fantastic film. Um, it's completely unexpected, actually. When I sort of read the brief, I, I didn't know what to expect, and it's amazing. Hi. So perhaps you could sort of start with a brief introduction to Marmalade. What can viewers expect when they watch this film? Well, you know, I mean, we we uh, we set out to make a kind of a wild ride, and that's um, that's sort of where we've landed, I think. Uh, you know, my intention was always to make a really fun film, you know, that was reminiscent of kind of 90s, 80s, 90s, um, you know, sort of action-y, um, fun uh, rides that I th that I grew up with. So it was kind of my um, melding of all of those things together to uh, to, to make this happen. And I, I know this is your directorial debut, which I'll come back to my next question, but um, what's the inspiration behind writing a story like this? Where did you kind of get the idea from? Because I know it's like a heist film, but it's also got these layers of romance and, you know, yeah. bits of realism and humour, left field kind of humour. So... No, that's it. I mean, you hit it on the head. It's kind of that's the, the films that I grew up with that I loved were, you know, everything from Raising Arizona to True Romance, Edward Scissorhands, you know, kind of this uh, a little bit oddball sort of character driven, pulpy, colorful, um, whimsical worlds, you know. So so that was always that was always kind of my general aesthetic for this going into it. Um you know, coming up with the characters was the first thing. And then sort of paring that down to like, well, what what are the genres that I love? And it was always like heist things. I love uh, the sort of Bonnie and Clyde kind of genre I've always been fascinated with, with this idea that we're rooting for people who are doing bad things, essentially. Yeah. You know, kind of these lovers on the on the on the run, you know. Um, so I was like, okay, how could I take that and sort of put my own twist on it? And and place it into this kind of wild, wacky world. So um, that's sort of that, that's kind of where it all started, and and where we, where we've landed now. And I mean, I know you previously wrote um, a case of you a few years ago, um, and also you've written this. What made you kind of turn your hand to go to the director's chair for this particular story? Then, you know, it's funny when I wrote Marmalade. Uh, when I was writing it, I I had no intentions of directing it. I, I I thought I would sort of hand it off. And even in the early stages of of um, trying to get it made, I we were looking for directors. Um, but the further and further we went down the line, it was like I just know this world so well. I know these characters so well. And finally, someone said, well, "Why don't you direct it?" <laughs> like me? But how? Do, yeah. How do I? But it was quite an easy transition, I'll say. I mean, being an actor for 20 plus years now I've been on a ton of movie sets I've I've worked with a ton of different directors so I I think that you know I mean as a general statement I think a lot of first time directors their biggest challenge is working with actors you know and sort of how do they do that so that and that was the least of my worries you know that was that was something that felt very second hand to me um being on sets like I said very second hand as well so I kind of I understand how the machine works I understand what positions people do and sort of how it comes together I think the biggest things that I learned were the pre-production side which I usually don't see and then the post-production side which I usually don't see you know so that was was really fascinating which pre-production was essentially just preparing and preparing preparing which I love to do as an actor anyway so that was um, because I knew this script so well that, you know, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted it to look like and feel like. I knew what I wanted the props to be like and the costumes and everything. It was, it was hiring really talented people and leaning on them and and hearing what they could add to the conversation. You know, also not getting in its way. So once a movie starts to happen, you kind of, you know, the the, the images that I dreamed up, you, you just need to make sure that it's going to look a little bit different than you thought that it would. And, and but as long as you don't uh, shut that off, you, you can find some some amazing things along the way, you know. Oh, thank you. And obviously in terms of finding the right people, how did you cast yeah. for Marmalade and um, and Baron, I think, you know, Joe Keery and Camilla Marone, you know, what was it about these two that made you think, yep, they're the perfect fit to tell my story? It was, it was a blessing and a curse, right, to, to write such specific characters that needed um, elements from actors that were, you know, you, you can't just put any any actor into these roles. You know, r right away, Joe had come to mind for me for Baron. I needed someone who was who could play 
um, kind of naive, but um, charming, um, sweet. Um, but then, you know, eventually give me a couple different sides and a, a, a couple different looks. So uh, Joe had come to mind. That being said, I had never seen him do an accent. You know, he's quite still early in his career. So it's I, I knew that sending it to him, he was either going to respond to it or say, like, no, this is not up my alley. And and luckily he did respond to it. I think um, you know, one of the first questions he asked me was like, I'm flattered, but why me? Like, <laughs> you know, like I, I've been looking for something like this. Um, but why did you think of me? And I just said, you know, there's a truthfulness to him on screen that I think is undeniable. And 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 that was true when we were shooting. You know, he never gave me a bad take. Everything was just right in the zone. It was just kind of, you know, figuring out exactly how much to push it or bring it back. And, and you know, lovely guy to work with as well and was just really... Um, you know, uh, collaborative with, with the look of the character and the feel and kind of, you know, um, rehearsals and everything else was just very available. Um, and then the same to say with Camilla, you know, Camilla, I, I had seen uh, a film that she had done called Mickey and the Bear, which I was just blown away by her performance. Um, she luckily came in to read for us. So I got to see her audition and it was like exactly what I was looking for, which is this sort of magnetic, electric, sort of dangerous um, performance, you know, that uh, the, the the film requires, because I think she has to, she really carries the film, you know, to, um, and purposefully that, that we want the audience sort of focused in her direction, you know, so she has to really not only hold his, not only hold Baron's attention, but also guide the audience sort of through the story, you know. Oh, and also working with this amazing cinematographer, um, you know, Polly Morgan, I mean, her work and things like where the cool dad's thing and, you know, that the work you can, you can see it in the, some of the scenes in the fields and the way that she uses her cinematography. Um, what was that collaboration like with her? What was it like to work with her? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, this is, uh, you know, breaking news, but it, it, Polly is my wife. Uh, oh, so God. <laughs> no, Congratulations. So, that's, <laughs> so um, that's, that, that, was, that, was, that was an easy choice. Uh, she'd be very mad at me if I, if I didn't use her. <laughs> cinematographer. But um, no, it was, it was, it was incredible to have my, my cinematographer in-house. Uh, so, uh, we, we had, we had tons of time for pre-production. You know, <laughs> constantly talked about it ad nauseum although she uh you know she was like really can we just stop talking about marmalade for a second <laughs> but, we go for dinner instead <laughs> exactly but uh, obviously um i i've been a massive fan of her work for years and um you know what she brings is sort of this beautiful reality uh to her work but you know with this we wanted to stretch it a little bit to go into this kind of whimsical um space but but continuing to use her aesthetics too and the things that she's so good at so that was kind of you know finding the right colors for the film and um letting that kind of guide our choices so it was a joy and also you know a challenge to work together <laughs> make a home and put it aside for a bit <laughs> that, i mean that was right it was always like the kind of work life balance of that which was yeah. really fascinating you know i think but because we, we we've both been doing what we've been doing for so long it, it um once we got going it was like it was we didn't even really have to talk to each other because we knew you know we know each other so well personally but then professionally as well it was kind of like we were both on the same page so it was it was a joy you know and i really love this dancing that you have this a real um moment of figment of his imagination of Baron, but also the mask as well that brings us kind of hyper surrealism to it could you talk about the choice for that and you know who made the masks for you guys yeah yeah absolutely so the you know the dancing sequence was always that was a very very early image i had for the film in my mind you know i i i went into writing the film wanting to do kind of this heist bonnie and clyde sort of genre so part of that was what does the romanticism of that look like you know and especially from baron's perspective who's a very sheltered kind of small town guy you know like what what does romance look like to him? And I feel like it's from this kind of like old time film that, you know, and, and sort of something foreign to him, you know, so it is kind of like this, like almost salsa dance. Right. And so the more I, I, I latched onto that, I was like, oh, I, I, I want to have that in, you know, to literally see that in the film somehow um, that that is like 
that is the most kind of romantic uh, image that he could that he could um, conjure. So alongside of that, of course, I wanted to put almost a, a sort of a creepy twist on it. So that was the masks. You know, I, I think that's such a big part of a heist film is like what costumes, what masks do they wear when they pull off a heist? So I, I wanted to do something different that we hadn't seen before. And um, of course, part of that was that we would have to create the masks. Luckily, um, my costume designer, Megan Spatz, was incredible um, and had a past of making masks um, uh, <laughs> in cer with certain events and things like that. So we worked together. I always had this idea of the three faces and uh, luckily she was able to kind of construct it and, and we played around with a few different versions and was so happy with what we landed on. Oh, it looks amazing. And it's kind of the multi-faceted sides of their personality as well, I think. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, But also, um, obviously, you know, we know you as well from Wedding Crashes, where you play a slightly quirky character. And then yeah. even in a case of you, you bring the kind of nerdy, slightly creepy um, yeah. sort of, not underdog, but outsider maybe character. And again, in this, what is it about yes. that that you like bringing to screen or being part of? Right, wow, this is like a therapy session now. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I go. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. It's so interesting you said that. I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I would say nine out of ten times when people meet me and just know my work, they're like, "Oh, wow, you're so normal." I thought you'd be <laughs> you'd been creepy, and I'm like, "Oh, thank you." Um, I, I've just always gravitated towards. Uh, you know, the wilder characters, I think. And that's um, that's certainly, again, where I wanted to go with this, you know, was writing characters that just aren't your everyday people that you see, you know, that this really something uh, for actors, especially to latch onto and to be able to kind of play around in this kind of like whimsical world a little bit. I think those are the performances that I grew up watching, I think, that are like Gary Oldman and, you know, the more sort of character actors who kind of really went for just you know bigger swings and 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 sort of found really bizarre sort of interesting mm -hmm. characters so is I, I love that 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 side of it but i think it's also really relatable i think for everyone you kind of along the way you meet this one person either at work or at school or yeah. I don't know, or in romantic notions, who changes everything, who causes chaos. And I think yeah. that's really relatable. I don't know if that's happened for you. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly that, you know, that's always the, the with with the acting side of things, you know, it's always finding a reality to it, you know, so you can't just play this like insane person that, you know, that that's that that doesn't have ties back to reality that so so that was always the goal with this is, you know, alongside finding the humanity of these characters was finding something, like you said, relatable, I think that people can go, oh, I, you know, either I've been in a relationship like that, or I know, you know, my buddy's been in that or, you know, or something, or you've sort of dreamed up this situation, you know, is kind of, um, we wanted to play into some of those tropes as well. And the stereotypes of, you think that it's like this. So let's, let's play into this to kind of latch the audience to go, oh, right. Like, I know where this is going. And then you like, <laughs> upside down so you know that that was by design as well to sort of play into play into those um you know those those commonalities yep that's it's very unpredictable um so thank you so much it's very interesting i absolutely love the film it's unpredictable and it's romantic and it's just quirky and it's lovely um well yeah. done yeah. <laughs> congratulations thank you so much for speaking to me